What if there was a place, an idyllic island, where residents don't go to gyms, don't take any sort of special pills or adhere to fad diets, and yet they live longer and have a quality of life many far younger souls could only envy. It's certainly hard to believe in a fountain of youth outside of mythology or movies. But then again, it may also be hard to believe what my Nightline co-anchor Bill Weir actually found when he traveled to an amazing place in the Aegean Sea. When you think of the good life on a Greek island, you might picture all-night bacchanals on the sand of Mykonos, where live bodies toast the fleeting glory of youth and party like there is no tomorrow. But what if I told you there is another Greek island few people know about, where they party long past tomorrow and well into their 90s? A place where they eat amazing food, wash it down with homemade wine, and make love without the help of any little blue pills. Two times a week. That's impressive. Well, that place is real, and it is called Ikaria, a 25-mile stretch of mountains surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea and home to around 8,000 hardy souls, many of whom refuse to get sick or senile, many who simply refuse to die. Largely, it's been a forgotten little island. Dan Butner is a fellow with National Geographic and an expert on so-called blue zones. Places like Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy. Places where people manage to outlive the rest of us by 10 years or more. This island had 10 times more siblings over 90 than any place else in the world. How many grapevines do you have? When he first began investigating this place, he found a guy named Stamitis Moriitis an Icarian who moved to the States as a young man and stayed until age 66 when he was diagnosed with cancer. Given just a few months to live, Stamitis moved back home, planted a garden, and waited to die. Who's that handsome fellow? But death never came. And 36 years later, after he'd outlived all of his doctors, he passed peacefully at 102. You don't want to live to 100 if the last 20 years of your life you're disabled. In a bed. Here they live a very long time. Uh, they tend to die peacefully in their sleep and occasionally after sex. They also have all their mental faculties in place. Americans will spend about a half a trillion dollars a year uh, by 2050 on dementia. And here they have only a small trace of dementia. So in other words, living a long time and staying sharp to the end are going hand in hand. So what's their secret here? And can we steal it? Well, it turns out that finding theories is as easy as finding spunky seniors, like Evangelina. What is your secret? Ah, that's what it is. You've got a friend upstairs. She's 97 years old and has the grip of a teenager. When you come to New York City, I'm going to take you out to some nightclubs. When she's not cleaning her own house or yelling at the neighbor lady, she's playing the mandolin and singing, though apparently neither on demand. I wonder what the tune is. We try to trick her into singing a few bars, but she's too quick for that. You're going to be 125. <laughs> and then there's Constantinos, a century old and still showing up for work every day. The cane helps with the wooden leg. He lost the real one fighting in World War II. And his secret is home brewed. So I'm not allowed to drink the entire bottle of wine at one time. <laughs> wine and wisdom from a hundred year old Greek. You still work? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Diet, stop. Oh, that's it. That's it. Demetrius is just a baby at 78, but well on his way. So what is the secret yeah. to Ikaria? Wine? Wine, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three glasses a day. And if you think living forever means giving up other vices, meet Gregoris, a hundred years old, and a pack-a-day smoker. Yeah, you better watch those things, man. And attention, ladies, he is looking for love. How old yeah. does he want his next wife to be? About 60, 55, 60. <laughs> you cradle robber. <laughs> I 
soon becomes obvious that these are people who maximize social engagement and minimize stress. And the best way to do that is to throw away the clock. And they have a very strange routine. They, they tend to wake up late, uh, they'll work in the morning, eat lunch about one or two, take a nap, and in the summer, uh, people will stay up to two, three in the morning. See, that's my kind of circadian <laughs> rhythm right there. I could get behind that yeah, schedule. When Ben Franklin came up with that whole early to bed, early to rise stuff, he obviously had never been to Icaria or met guys like Gregoris. On some nights, he'll be on the prowl until early morning. Oh, really? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 They were dancing naked yeah. after the wine. Do you want to the rest of your garbage? If you don't like what you see, get out of here. I want to party with you. But be careful what you wish for. See, Icaria is named after Icarus. You remember the guy in Greek mythology who flew too close to the sun and crashed into the sea? Well, the story blames his wax wings, but after an impromptu invitation from these kind strangers, I begin to suspect it had something to do with the local grape juice. And that wine last night? Yeah. That is not your typical bottle of Merlot. That stuff is like 15 proof. No, no, you can remove paint with it, yeah. <laughs> they very rarely drink wine by itself. It's always consumed with a little bit of food. It's consumed with friends. It's not something you come home after work and pound a couple glasses. So. Yeah, nobody's drinking alone yeah. here. The rest of their diet is typical Mediterranean goodness. A lot of fish and nuts and fruits, a little meat. They start every day with a big spoonful of thick pine-flavored honey to coat the digestive tract. And they drink gallons of local herbal tea, a natural diuretic which keeps inflammation down. And there must be some kind of aphrodisiac in there. Do you give your wife a kiss? <laughs> oh, she's giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> And despite the severe terrain, there are no escalators here, no wheelchair lanes or shuttle buses. These are people who move to live and vice versa. Our grandparents burnt about five times as many calories in non-exercise physical activity. Here, these people move mindlessly. They burn a thousand calories a day just doing everyday chores, kneading breads, gardening, walking to their friend's house. And I think that's a big secret for Americans. Nobody here tried to live to 100. They didn't go on the centenarian diet. They didn't try to exercise their way to health. Join a gym. Right, take a supplement. It happened. It was a result of their environment. <laughs> and when it comes to mental health, here's another huge key. Old folks are treasured in this society. The idea that they would warehouse their seniors is, is a vile thought here. Yes. Yeah, the idea of putting your aging parent in a retirement home would bring shame to the family. They're seen as repository of wisdom. Uh, they help with child care. They help with the garden. They feel like they're, they're, they have a sense of purpose. They're not just told, well, you've worked for 40 or 50 years and now, you know, go down to Florida and retire. All we know for sure is that people are living eight to 10 years longer without dementia. They do so without depression, without heart disease and cancer, big killers in America. They don't have any special genes. There's some combination between the way they live and their environment that is yielding extraordinary longevity. You're just getting stronger and stronger. But if Evangelina gets her way, scientists and reporters will be stopping by her house for years to come to hear the secret to a long and happy life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Bill Weir for Nightline, Icaria, Greece. <laughs>